Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Ray, and I just finished doing my second year in physics here at Cambridge. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going over how I got an A star in A-level maths when I set my exams in the summer of 2019. Now, I did AQA for A-level maths, and that was a new specification as well, but that largely doesn't matter because for most of the new specification A-level maths, the exam boards are almost all the same, which also means that you can attempt past papers from other exam boards as well, which is pretty neat. Anyway, I'll be talking about my workflow for A-level maths, then I'll go into some more like math specific resources which I use, and then finally any advice which I have. As always, timestamps and links to anything I mention will be in the description down below, so do check those out during the video. So I'll quickly outline my workflow for A-level maths, but I do have a longer video explaining my workflow which should be linked above somewhere right now. So anyway my first step was downloading the specification and then keeping on my Google Drive which I then used and checked through like regularly to make sure um, as the content was being taught in class I could check through it and then maybe annotate any points which I didn't exactly understand and then ask my teachers about it. And after like using the spec and I would have an idea of where we were in the course then I would go to lesson and actually learn the content class. So I kind of know what the next few lessons were going to be about because the specification uh, tells you like the order in which your teachers are teaching the course to you. And during the class, I would like learn the content, make sure I'm understanding the material and make notes during the lesson. Afterwards, I would then start doing some practice questions. So that was usually for any homework we were given. But if I found myself struggling on like certain parts of the topic and I didn't understand it too well, then like I would try to do more practice questions on it or try to find some videos online by searching on YouTube. Now, it doesn't matter too much about like finding YouTube videos by specific A-level maths, like YouTubers or something. And that's because maths is just maths. So like if you're struggling to like, I don't know, you use a chain reel or something, it doesn't matter if you're watching an A-level video on using a chain reel or like a video by Khan Academy or something on using a chain reel. So like just type the topic name into YouTube and you can usually find a good video explaining it to you. And after doing like practice questions throughout the year for any content we were learning and also coming back to topics which I found difficult and making sure I could still do those with practice questions, about two to three months before my exams, I'd start doing a bunch of past papers. And there aren't too many past papers for the new specification, but there are specimen papers and there are papers from other boards as well. So I tried doing some of these uh, specimen papers and papers from other boards. And if you want to find the specimen papers, then you can either do that by searching online and finding it on some like dodgy websites, but don't download any viruses or something, or asking your teacher about it instead. So when I was doing the past papers and the specimen papers, then I would make notes of anything that I like usually got wrong or made mistakes on and then added it onto a mistakes document and I would come back to this mistakes document regularly throughout the year and also just before doing any practice test or something so I'd know exactly what mistakes I had I had a habit of making so I could then develop a habit of also looking out for those mistakes so that when it came to the real exam like I didn't have to worry too much about because like my brain was sort of active and I, ha I like made a habit of looking out for these mistakes so I made them less frequently. So that was basically a summary of my A-level maths workflow. Um, as for a few resources which I found to be really useful the first of which was YouTube. Now like the best way to actually get better at maths is by doing more questions but you actually have to learn the material first. And textbooks for me and the textbooks we used in lessons, I thought were pretty useless when it came to maths and they were just like badly written and, and sometimes I just didn't understand what the hell they were going on about. And that's one of the points I want to mention. Like if you don't understand what's going on in the textbook, then don't think you're like stupid or something because in many cases, I just didn't understand the textbook because it was just poorly written. And unfortunately, most A-level textbooks I think are quite poorly written. Uh, so like, don't force yourself to use a textbook if you're just not understanding it. Although the practice questions in the textbook were pretty useful, which I'll go into that later. Anyway, for learning the content, I used YouTube mainly, and that was just by searching any topics on YouTube, which I was struggling with, and just finding any old video online. So if I go to YouTube, then I can just search something like chain rule, and then I can just find like videos by like Nancy Pye or something, or like Organic Chemistry Tutor, or like Khan Academy, on the chain rule. And if I wanted more A-level math specific videos, then a good channel was TL Maths. Now he has videos about uh, all of A-level maths. So if you go to his playlists, then you can find a super long playlist which covers the entire of A-level maths somewhere. Or I think it might be if you go to his website, TL Maths, then it can be easy to find it there. So if you go to A-level maths, then you can find the uh, full A-level, then you can do either AS, then you can go to either AS only or full A-level videos and then like just go to the topic. So like if I wanted to go to algebra and functions, then I'd go over here 
and then like functions itself. And this is mapped according to the specification. And then I can just find all the videos here. Now, I didn't watch all his videos. I watched like a few videos here and there because most of the time, like I sort of understood what was going on in a lesson or understood the topic well enough. But if I didn't particularly like my teacher's explanation of what was going on, then I would come here. But if you're like self-teaching yourself A-level maths, then this is probably a good place to like learn all the material from. But I don't imagine anyone who actually has to like watch all his video videos um, because like your teacher should be able to teach a good chunk of A-level maths to you well. So basically don't feel a temptation to watch all his videos despite how good they are. Like do practice questions and if you find yourself struggling with the topic or you don't understand it too well and your teacher hasn't explained it well to you, then come back to the videos, learn the content and then try the practice questions again. Now the next useful resource was exam solutions. So they also have some good videos. So if I go to like A-level, then I can find uh, like for say AQA, even though the exam boards don't matter too much, then for like mechanics, I can go to tutorials and then just find a bunch of videos. So like moments, if I go to moments, then I can like click on one of these and then just find some a video where he explains it. Also, he goes through a lot of questions as well. And he has some exam questions, uh, which you can attempt yourself and then view the solution for. So it's a pretty good way to like work through the course and then watch him go through the solutions too. Now he does speak pretty slowly. So I do watch his videos at like two or three times speed. And if you want to watch a video at faster than two times speed on a computer, then I'd recommend downloading the extension video speed controller and then like learning the shortcuts uh, and then like you can watch a video like three times speed. Now after learning the material from using like online resources and learning in class then I would do some textbook questions and I generally found the end of chapter questions to be like particularly good because I usually take them from like past papers or like previous textbooks whereas the actual content learning the content from the textbook for me like I just didn't learn it from the textbook. So I would do the end of chapter questions and to make sure I actually understood the material because the textbook I used or the teachers it gave us uh, went from like the hard, the easiest questions at the start of the end of chapter questions to the hardest. So I'd like do the final five questions and if I could do those textbook questions then I was, I was just happy with the topic and if I couldn't then I'd like jump to some middle questions or some easier questions to begin with rather than trying to do like every single end of chapter textbook question because one piece of advice I'm going to give later on is be intentional about what you're trying to improve. And finally I would do some past papers and I would find them on a website called Physics and Maths Tutor. So if I go to past papers then go to A levels and go to like maths uh, then I can find a bunch of the new specification past papers and the old spec past papers as well. So generally I would not touch the old spec past papers because the style of questions is pretty different and like some of the old spec past papers were really easy and they're just not that easy anymore. Uh, although there are some good papers like the Solomon papers uh, which are get particularly challenging. So if you go to like mechanics one which was an old spec module uh, and then press like Solomon papers and scroll down and you can find they are different levels of difficulty. So I think the easiest Solomon papers are like A and then like one of the hardest is like J. So if you go to like the question paper then you can scroll down and see a bunch of these questions and then you can also mark them yourself. So these are custom written papers with like I think the difficulty becoming harder the later you go in the alphabet. So I would usually do like the last three, um, last three most difficult papers and I would like be pretty confident if I was able to get those questions right. And if I couldn't get those questions right then I'd like try to understand the mark scheme or think about the question or follow some of the advice I have in my tackling difficult questions video which is linked above right now or even go to my teachers and ask them for some help. So that was the bulk of the resources I used. There were YouTube videos, uh, textbook end of chapter questions and also questions from like physics and maths tutor for past papers of the old spec and the new spec but for the old spec I tried to do the Solomon papers because they're particularly challenging and they're in the style of like new specification questions. Anyways as for a few tips the first I'd recommend keep looking for explanations until you're satisfied. So I remember like when I first encountered the second derivative in the first few weeks of A level or something then I just didn't get it or I just didn't understand why if the second derivative was like less than zero then it would be concave and if the second derivative was greater than zero then it would be convex. I just didn't understand that and I made a flashcard on it and I wasn't too happy with the facts. I just couldn't come to that conclusion myself. So I remember asking my teacher about it a few times and the explanation didn't make too much sense to me. And I just like found some video online and they explained it perfectly to me. So like you want to be memorizing as little as possible in A-level maths, especially when it comes to the pure content. So just keep looking for explanations until you're satisfied. And this is especially important early on because it leads on to my second 
bit of advice, learn until you're happy with the material. So keep asking questions to your teachers. And if you come across any feelings of confusion, like notice feelings of confusion within yourself when you're say encountering a topic and then like deal with it as soon as possible. Because if you keep like saying, oh, I'll just come back to it when I'm doing revision or something, like you will have gotten so used to that, that you will have just basically memorized it by accident and not actually understood it because when you expose something enough times, then it can just lead you to like memorizing it instead of understanding it. So when you are confused with some topic, then try to understand it as soon as possible within like the first few days of, or something. And then next I'd say, be intentional about what you're trying to improve and what you're trying to get better at. And this is a problem I noticed with many students like you also did A-level maths in my school, they just said to themselves, oh, I'm going to do every single textbook question or like every single past paper or something or like every single topic test from like this website. No, like you should be intentional about what you're trying to improve because otherwise it leads to a lot of wasted motion, which is a term I'm using here for anything that doesn't directly contribute to your goals. Like if you're really good at differentiation or you're really good at using the chain wheel or something, then it's just a waste of time for you to like practice that even more or like do a whole end of chapter textbook questions about it because you're just sort of wasting your time like think about which topics you're feeling the most confused on or like the most you struggle to understand the most and then do questions specifically related to that and if you find the questions are too difficult then try to find some easier questions or, the, or try to learn the content or try to pinpoint what where your difficulty is actually lying rather than just saying to yourself I'll do every single textbook question and then I'll get better at A-level maths. Like you have to think and focus about what you're actually trying to improve and what you're struggling on the most. And if you're somewhat confused about what you're struggling on the most, then I would recommend setting a five minute timer. So for many of like the issues I have, I just deal with them in five minute timers, which involves like setting a timer on your phone five, for five minutes and then thinking to yourself a question like, okay, what are the things I'm finding the most difficult in A-level maths right now? And then forcing yourself to actually think about the issue for five minutes can be super useful because it's not too long. And generally people don't think about the issue for more than 10 seconds. So this can be one way of getting you to actually think and be intentional about what you're trying to improve on. Next, I would recommend developing an exam technique of knowing when to move on. So there can be a mix of like difficult and easy questions for an exam. And I remember for my actual A-level maths exam when I sent it in like summer 2019, um, like some of the easy questions came up towards the end and there were like there were some difficult questions in the middle and there were many people who like sort of could, didn't know when to give up or didn't know when to move on from the middle difficult question so they just missed an easy question at the end because the papers may not necessarily in order, be in order from like easy to difficult for your exam board. So my general rule was that if I could keep thinking of new solutions or keep finding new ways to tackle this problem then I would stick with the question but if I found myself like trying the same thing over and over again but I wasn't getting anywhere then the chances are I made a mistake but I just can't tell that that is a mistake in the moment which means I have to come back to it. So in many cases like I would put a little star or an asterisk next to a question so I would move on to a different question and then like say when I finished a paper or I finished all the questions which I haven't stored then I would come back to the stored questions and then usually I would see some mistake in my attempt and then like fix that mistake and then be able to finish a question. So storing questions and then coming back to them later on can be really useful if you find yourself trying the same technique or thing over and over again because chances are you made a mistake but you're so stuck and focused on that question in particular that you just can't find the mistake until you come back to it. And my final recommendation is not to procrastinate from hard topics. So if you're learning a particularly hard topic in class don't just give up and say oh I'll come back to it like later on in the year or something because you will have been exposed to enough times throughout the year and that you will just end up forgetting why your misunderstandings lie and you'll just end up memorizing it instead of actually understanding it if you come back to it frequently enough. So I'd make an effort to understand things as they came up and like within the next few days if I just wasn't particularly happy because I knew the next time I come back to it I would just have to revise myself um, because you're going to have to understand something at some point so you might as well understand it when the teacher is explaining it to you or when you're learning it in that weekend lesson rather than saying that you will understand it two months before the exam because things are just going to pile up and you're going to have to understand like 20 different topics for the first time and understanding things just takes time that was quite difficult and you're not going to have time to understand like 20 different topics for the first time so understand things as you're going along because you'll be grateful for yourself later on but yeah that's basically how I approach daily of maths and I hope you're able to take away some useful advice from that if you're interested in how I studied for like all my subjects and the precise details of my like studying techniques and stuff then I have a playlist called studying effectively for GCSEs and A-levels which has a bunch of useful videos. So do check that out if you have time and I guess for now I'll see you next time. Bye!